Welcome to my course uh, electrochemical energy storage and uh, this is uh, module number 7 where I will introduce the basic concepts of battery pack design and uh, in this uh, particular lecture we will be talking about uh, uh, the battery module connection of the cell in series and parallel connections, the need of uh, battery management system the need of thermal management system and how to pack this battery module inside an enclosure. So, that will be described. So, the concept that uh, you will learn through this lecture is uh, how to do the battery layout uh, and how to design the battery. At the end of the lecture, I will be given one reference book and that you should read people who are interested to work on the battery for the manufacturing and uh, understanding how to build the battery pack. Uh, they must read this book from front cover to the end cover. So, the whole book should be read and it is excellent book as far as the illustration is concerned and part of it I have used in my lecture and you should read it if you are really into this game. Voltage requirement for different applications uh, just to give you some kind of idea what are the genesis of this voltage requirement and how to group these cells to increase both the voltage and the capacity. Then what is continuous current requirement the maximum continuous current how you can estimate from a battery pack. Then we will talk about the introduction of battery management system exactly what for it is needed, why almost all big battery packs they need it, but smaller uh, batteries 2, 3 batteries you can omit that. Um, so, that uh, although the BMS I will cover in more details in the next lecture. So, I will introduce this and similarly the temperature issues and packaging issues of the battery that also will be covered. So, earlier we have already uh, talked about that once we connect this lithium ion cells, uh, they are in series, then the voltage is increased and to increase the capacity, they are needed to be connected in parallel. To achieve both desired voltage and capacity, cells need to be connected both in series and parallel. So, you should have a matrix, you should have cells connected in a series that means the positive is connected to negative and also in parallel where positive and negative connections are same. <coughs> Let us uh, cite you some example, say um, the you are uh, required to um, determine the nominal voltage as well as capacity for uh, some configuration. 13 S means 13 uh, lithium cell is connected in series and 4 are in parallel and uh, it is given that the cell is having a nominal voltage of 3.7 volt and capacity 3.0 ampere hour. And the next one is uh, 8 S 2 P battery pack using a 3.2 volt. So, it is lower than this, but the capacity is higher. So, we will have to determine the nominal voltage. So, the voltage is straightforward 13 into 3.7. So, that gives you 48.1 volt and capacity is 4 into 3 because you have 4 cells connected in parallel. So, 4 into 3 is 12 ampere hour and you can also know the energy once you know the voltage and capacity. The second example you are getting a 25.6 volt uh, that is the voltage you are getting out of this cap battery pack and capacity is uh, 10 ampere hour. So, it is a straightforward calculation. So, again if you are required to determine the pack configuration that is the number of the cell which are connected in series and parallel. Uh, if you are asked uh, to build a 37 volt 11.6 ampere hour battery pack using 3.7 volt 2.9 ampere hour lithium ion cells you can work it out that for this one uh, the configuration is 10 S 4 P that will give you uh, this uh, kind of uh, uh, values and for the next one 
uh, it is uh, 14S 10P that will give you uh, uh, 51.8 volt 100 ampere hour battery. So, you will have to connect the cells in series and parallel type of connection. So, also you should uh, determine the capacity of the cell using in a battery pack of the following specifications. So, it is given 74 volt and 20 ampere hour battery pack of configuration 20 S and 8 P um, built using 3.7 volt lithium ions. So, you need to determine the capacity. The voltage is matching well because 20 into 3.7 that is giving 74 volt and capacity is calculated as 20 divided by 8 ampere hour. So, you need uh, 2.5 ampere hour cells. So, this kind of calculation you should familiarize yourself. Now, the connection of the cell you need to connect the positive terminal, negative terminal and connect in series and parallel. Usually, this kind of caps they are available. We personally we have used it and uh, uh, this uh, is actually bolted with uh, nickel bolt for a very strong uh, um, compact connection because if there is a loose connection then that creates lots of problem. So, this is uh, the easiest type uh, because if you just do the tab welding here then if uh, for example, this cell is bad then uh, to take it out is a really difficult task because you will have to take this one out to take this one out this and this also will have to open and this may be connected with this one. So, if you go for this kind of holder then you put the battery like this then you have a top cap here and then you can with this with the help of this screw. Um, which is part of this holder, you can connect it with this tabs and then screw tight it. So, this is a much better configuration uh, what I feel. So, these are available in the market in Alibaba or in uh, Amazon you can easily find this. Now, there is an interesting part as far as the voltage profile is concerned and I would like to draw your attention. This is a typical uh, curve uh, for a lithium ion battery discharge. So, it is being discharged from 4.2 volt uh, down to uh, say 2.5 volt. So, that is the range. So, you can calculate the nominal voltage which is uh, somewhere in between this two. So, that nominal voltage is 3.6 volt which is actually uh, written on the battery cap. So, uh, so, you can charge this uh, to 4.2 volt and there from there you can discharge it down to 2.5 volt. So, these two are uh, marked by these two red circles. So, it is a reasonably good voltage range. Now, if you have a 10 series connected cells, so that will create as far as that nominal voltage it will create 36 volt. So, the battery voltage basically this is the nominal voltage of the of the battery that you have made, but the battery voltage that ranges from 42 volt in fully charged condition down to 25 volt right. So, this is the total range of the battery during operation you can operate 42 volt to 25 volt according to this curve. Now, say if you have a uh, particular application which require 30 volt, 30 volt is required. So, once uh, you require a 30 volt and you have a range of 42 volt to 25 volt. So, exactly um, 5 percent of your capacity will be wastage because you will stop here, 30 volt is here. So, you will just stop it. So, this much capacity will be losing. So, 5 percent capacity will be lost, but if you need a application an application which requires 35 volt. So, 35 volt is here. So, you cannot go below 35 volt range. So, you will have to stop it here. So, that means all the cell will be discharged at 3.5 volt and in that case 25 percent of the capacity is a wastage. So, whenever you have a specific application in mind 
we will have to select the cell in such a way. So, that this loss are minimum otherwise this capacity will never be used that may not be that bad for the battery, but you might uh, putting a little bit larger cost in getting this cells or making this cells. So, you should keep it in mind. So, a voltage requirements varies uh, depending on the application that you have in mind. Many electronics uh, such as inverters, electric motors and other DC devices, they are designed uh, to work in a voltage uh, in 12 volt increment and there is a historic reason for it. You know the lead acid battery which is the last module I will be teaching. Lead acid battery came first and uh, each of the cell will give you 2 volts. So, if you connect 6 of such uh, cells in series you will get 12 volt. So, it is easy for you to make in 12 volt. So, 12 volt, 24 volt, 36 volt, 48 volts. So, in, in, in multiplication with 12. So, that is the reason. So, 12 volt headlamp or 48 volt electric bicycles they are very common using lead acid battery. So, each cell uh, as I told is having a nominal voltage of 2 volt and they are connected to in series to get 12 volt. And uh, lithium ion battery now you need to integrate with this kind of application because you are trying to uh, replace lead acid battery which is much heavier, much bulky with the lighter lithium ion battery. So, that also should uh, get a 12 volt increment. So, if you have uh, the most commonly accepted lithium ion battery for 24 volt which is used for um, electric bicycle, uh, 7 cells connected in series uh, which create about 25.9 volt nominal battery. So, actual range is 21 to 29 volt during use uh, the one that I showed you. The top of the charge and bottom of the discharge. Uh, so, for 36 lithium ion battery all EV manufacturers they use 10 cells which create 37 volt nominal battery and that goes to 42 to 30. So, 42 to 30 and that is used and 37 volt uh, nominal battery use and your requirement is 36 volt. So, therefore, the uh, wastage is marginal. Now, many 48 batteries for e-bikes they are actually made for 14 cells in series which basically gives a nominal range of 51.8 volt and has a higher voltage range from 42 to 58.8 volt. So, this, this kind of battery because of this wide range they are often referred as 52 volt battery instead of 48 volt battery just to signify that they are indeed having a higher voltage than standard 48 volt lithium batteries. Many power drills that you use uh, is having a 11.1 volt nominal battery which consists just 3 lithium ion cells in series. So, the size of this is pretty small nowadays and if you have seen the bigger power tool battery you will have to connect it in the power source is a very bulky now very small powerful power tools are available. So, in this case still it is called 12 volt battery and usually for this purpose lithium iron phosphate uh, cells are fairly popular and this is one of the do yourself uh, do it yourself project uh, for electric vehicle conversion 3.2 volt nominal range to make uh, this small sports car you know. So, that is the uh, uh, general battery uh, lithium ion battery that people are using. Now, um, if it is a prismatic cell like this, then uh, you can connect it something like this for a 7 cell series and one parallel kind of configuration, which is pretty straightforward. You have this is positive, it is to be connected with negative, negative to positive and positive to negative. So, these are all 7 are connected in series and one cell 
uh, is there uh, only that that itself is a one cell with one negative terminal and this one is a positive terminal. So, this is pretty straightforward. In case of um, this uh, series and parallel configuration for example, 4 s 2 p this kind of thing first you will have to connect the parallel in groups. So, you will have to identify the parallel cells um, and then connect this uh, and then uh, you have a bigger battery. So, then positive to one of this battery will have to be connected to the negative of this and vice versa to get this 4 s and 2 p connections. So, please work out um, and try to understand what I tried to convey that um, how basically if you have this kind of power cell you know the positive and negative terminals are marked and you know that how they are made. This is basically you can consider just like a power cell which is packed in a uh, rectangular um, uh, box. So, this positive and negative we are having. So, in order to get 4 s 2 p this is this is the kind of configuration that you need to use. So, 2 like this then 2 in reverse then 2 like this and 2 in reverse something like this and then you connect it such uh, that 2 cells they are in parallel. So, they are individually uh, 1 cell. So, this 2 you can connect as 1 dash if you consider 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 because total the matrix will give you 8 cells. So, you have total 8 cells then first 2 is 1 dash, second is 2 dash, 3 dash and 4 dash. Then positive of this 2 will have to be connected with negative of this one and negative of this one with positive of this one. So, from this connection you can easily make out how to make this cell connection. This is important for bigger cell and uh, you will have to be a bit careful uh, how to make the design. The book that I have referred they have given several examples of this kind of simple connection or if you want it to connect in a triangular shape for a bicycle how to connect this pictographically it is very well illustrated. So, similar kind of connection can be done for cylindrical cell as well. Uh, in case of power cell, uh, you are little bit flexible as far as the space is concerned, but in case of uh, the solid cylindrical cell or the prismatic cell actually those much space is gone. right? So, you will have to uh, pack it properly. So, if you have the cell connection something like this, so this is known as linear packing. So, in linear packing the void space of course, is little bit more. So, we are consuming more space and uh, this is known as offset packing where uh, you can see that this is slightly offset. So, that this gap is minimized. So, it is more packed up as compared to this one. So, this is one of the um, most efficient method to leave relatively smaller void between the cell because space particularly for the mobile application is of your concern. Now, maximum continuous current uh, uh, that you need to estimate if you know the cell nominal voltage uh, is 3.7 volt and capacity is 3.5 ampere hour. Then this is a typical 3 s 3 p kind of configuration 3 cells they are connected in series and 3 cell in parallel. So, that is the configuration for that and this one is the configuration for 3 s and 6 p. So, nominal voltage you can calculate here at uh, uh, 11.1 volt because 3 are in series, 3 are in parallel. So, capacity is 10.5 ampere hour. In this case the voltage remains same because still it is 3 cell in series. So, the nominal voltage is still 11.1 volt, but the capacity is higher because number of cell in parallel is large. So, capacity is 21 ampere hour. Now, the cell rating that is specified as 10 ampere and that cell rating is specified by the manufacturer. So, we can calculate the C rate for continuous discharge is 10 ampere divided by its capacity 3.5 ampere hour. So, that will give you uh, the C rate because you know the C rate is 
in 1 hour the discharge capacity. So, you know 1 hour the discharge capacity is 3.5 amperes. So, in order to get 10 ampere 2.86 is the C rate. So, that is the maximum continuous discharge. Now, if you consider this battery the first one they will supply 10.5 which is the capacity into this C rate. So, that means total you will get 30 ampere hour. For this one you will get 21 ampere hour and this is the actual C rate. So, it will get 60 ampere. So, this battery is 11 volt, this battery is also 11 volt, but due to the capacity it is higher than this continuous uh, maximum current you can drain 30 ampere for this and 60 ampere for this. So, how do we exactly determine the maximum continuous discharge current that the pack can supply? This is one of the important criteria. So, two thumb rule methods are there. First method tells multiply the maximum continuous discharge current of the cell by the number of cells in parallel. So, you know that the rated uh, discharge current is 10 ampere and 3 are in parallel. So, it will give you 30 amperes and second one is 10 amperes still the same cell you are using and that will uh, 6 are there in parallel. So, you will get 60 ampere. Second method is multiply the C rate of the battery pack of the cell to be precise by the capacity of the battery pack in ampere hour. Just I walked out. For the first battery this is 2.86 into 10.5 ampere hour that is 30 ampere hour which I showed earlier and second battery it is 60 ampere. Now, we will have to consider a factor of safety that the maximum allowed load divided by the actual load. So, the factor of safety for a 10 ampere capacity cell operating just at 7 ampere is 1.4. So, this factor of safety should be maintained so that the battery is not abused. Now, why exactly a battery management system is required? So, once the cell is in a parallel group, uh, it has a load applied to it, then all the cells in this group experience the load equally. So, if in one cell the voltage drops down, then uh, from the other uh, it is compensated as soon as the cell's voltage tries to drop, current flows from the neighboring cell to maintain the voltage in equilibrium. So, parallel cell is not a problem and this phenomena called cell balancing. Now, in case of a series connected cell, the situation is slightly different because of these connections and also the internal resistance of the cell you have slight different internal resistance of each individual cell. And this is due to this fact current um, that is flowing through the cell is a little bit different. So, all the cells they are in slightly different state of charge and these cells are not balanced even if you are using a same quality of cells that means, they have same nominal voltage, same capacity, but the internal resistance it is not necessary they are all identical. So, this series connected cells are usually not balanced. Now, when you are have a number of cells are relatively less, then this unbalancing is not a major problem and with a normal charger which is non balancing, uh, you cannot basically monitor the individual cell only you are applying the voltage across the pack. So, small connected cells in series it is not a major problem, but for larger battery pack it creates a problem because the state of charge is different. So, with that normal charger which is non balancing and a unbalanced battery where the cell capacity is different, some of these cells will inevitably become overcharged and other will not get charged all the way. 
So, overcharge cell is problematic and if the ch cells are not fully charged that is also problematic. So, the problem if I summarize for the unbalanced cell there are three major problems. Lower voltage cells do not get charged all the way. So, their state of charge is low. When a pack is discharged, these cells will get drained even lower causing a irreparable damage of the cell because they are not fully charged. The cells which are overcharged that also can do the cell damage because you know the overcharging can lead to electrolyte oxidation, oxygen evolution, structural collapse and many other factors which already I have described in my earlier classes. An unbalancing cell that can also is having a runaway condition. This will support disproportionate load and get further unbalanced. So, it is a vicious circle. So, due to this vicious circle, unbalanced cell uh, will be more unbalanced if you continue like this. So, that is a bad thing. Unbalanced thing, unbalanced cells are bad things. So, balanced charger uh, that works well for the small battery, this charger monitors each cell compared to the bulk charger and can drain off some of the energies from any cell that gets charged too high. So, it works more or less well for limited number of series cells. So, when we are talking about BMS which I will um, elaborate in details in my next class um, in this module. So, they does something similar to this balance charger, but BMS actually it does not reside in the charger like normal charger and balance charger if you if you see that it, you cannot differentiate, but in the balance charger this cell balancing uh, capability is there, but in case of BMS proper BMS that stays in between this charger and the pack and they are actually multifunctional not only this cell balancing, but they do lot of other functions which are beneficial for the battery pack. The first it does is stop balancing that pack voltage from the charger pass through the cells and charge them to correct the voltage. During charging BMS continuously monitor the cells and they will start to drain off some of the energy for the cell which gets overcharged. Bottom balancing also is possible. In that case uh, BMS balance the cell where the cell approaching their empty state that is towards discharge. Now, usually this stop balancing uh, is the industry standard. So, most of the BMS they do the top balancing. I will give you a details of this uh, active and passive balancing in my other lectures uh, in, in this particular module. Now, what are the multifunctionality? Number one is there is a protection circuit for discharging. So, that we call low voltage cut up. It will not allow you to overcharge as well as over discharge the battery. So, both are important. You cannot over discharge the battery in your mobile phone. There is no BMS of course. So, they have a smart uh, charger. So, they actually do the uh, thing, but in a bigger battery you have a protection circuit. Uh, it protects the short circuiting of the battery particularly in the series connection if one is short circuit then the whole battery is gone. So, BMS take care of it, it replace it bypass that uh, short circuited cell and still the battery can run because you have a range of uh, top of the charge and bottom of the discharge as I mentioned. So, if you have an application of 30 volt you have basically 42 to 25 volt range, so you can manage that. Thermal protection is built in that include temperature probe monitor to detect the hot spot. So, if there is any hot spot and that leads to the thermal runaway condition BMS take care of it. BMS uh, they have Bluetooth connectivity. 
so uh, you can and with a data logger so the battery uh, all electrochemical characteristics that you, that is there on the display what is their voltage what is their charge um, what is the state of charge what is the state of health what is the temperature inside the cell that can be displayed and there is a data logger so for remote application always you can have a uh, look that how it performed and it also uh, can have a anti theft feature so you take the battery out but you cannot run it because unless it receives a signal it will not start to discharge or you cannot charge it even so all these facilities if they are incorporated in the bms then the bms is of course will be expensive charging temperature is important and thermal management issues these two are all important the first one is quite interesting charging lithium battery at low temperature below 0 degree which damage the cell because what will happen that when you charge it then lithium instead of going for intercalation because of the very low energy it will electroplate on the graphite surface and uh, therefore uh, electroplating you know the dendrite will form and that will pierce the um, separator and there will be internal short circuit. So, uh, for sudden EV therefore, there is a heater circuit there. So, it raises the temperature uh, from sub 0 to up to a level so that you can safely charge it. And charging lithium battery cells at higher temperature can both reduce its capacity and potentially lead to thermal runaway. So, charging lithium battery uh, cell produces heat that you know uh, because of the internal resistance of the cell. If the cell is already approaching a dangerous level of heat, then additional heat from charging can push it over. So, already it is hot and then you are charging on top of it, then that will lead to thermal runaway. So, you need to have a good thermal management system to get rid of this uh, heat. There is a separate lecture where I will discuss that, that how exactly it is done. Now, you will have to put everything together inside a casing. So, this case actually is CAD designed and this is basically taken from one of our own project. Uh, I am not going into the details what is what, but this kind of case uh, is uh, not only it can hold all your battery module, then BMS, then you are able to connect the charger, there are thermal management in terms of you can put a small fan, so that the fan sucks and there is a continuous flow of air. You can use a uh, phase change material, uh, just uh, it will take the heat and uh, then it will melt itself and save the battery. Uh, so, lot of uh, ways uh, that you can adopt um, and also this battery is in a water shield condition. So, you can use it under water. So, there will be no water leakage. It is connected of course, for this kind of application where the battery is working somewhere else and you are monitoring from uh, some other remote place. So, some kind of connectivity is required and for smaller distance Bluetooth connectivity is also incorporated and there is a display here. Display uh, can actually show you all the characteristics of the uh, battery overcharge as well as discharge. Uh, there are various types of design that we could think of and accordingly make this pack design where all this cylindrical or power cell battery module along with the battery management system and thermal management system they are all packed together. So, it is a CAD based design and uh, uh, as I said battery module, BMS, connected charger, thermal management, Wi-Fi model, data logger, LCD display, thermal management, water sealing. Uh, so, it is a complete set of battery. So, that is we call the packaging of the battery. So, each in individual part I will explain it in more details how the BMS works, how the thermal management works, uh, how to do a good packaging and this is just the introduction that why exactly we need it to make a battery module for a particular application. So, this book I was talking about by Mika Toll, 
do it yourself lithium ion battery how to build your own battery packs and this is uh, the uh, the it is available in an Amazon and this is the link for this book and uh, for this kind of thing uh, once you know the battery chemistry and other parts of the battery which I was talking about what is their positive electrode cathode electro electrolyte uh, you have a cell then how to make a battery for various useful purpose for e-bike for uh, UPS storage for other types of application including a small EV battery it is uh, throughout the book uh, he has explained it quite nicely. So, that is the study material and I will uh, ask you to go through it um, just like a reading material just like a story book and you will enjoy this book. So, in this particular lecture the battery layout and design serial and parallel connections I have introduced then the voltage requirement for different applications I gave you some idea. Then grouping the cells to yield desired voltage and capacity uh, how to do that then maximum and continuous current how to estimate it from the rate and capacity um, that was taught and introduction to BMS and why do you need and when do you need a BMS that is illustrated and finally, the temperature issues and packaging have been talked about. Thank you for your attention.